Essex offers a surprisingly rich and diverse history. During the first century BC, the mighty Catuvalorni tribe evolved as the dominant rulers. By AD 43, East Anglia was dominated by the Iceni, led by King Prasutagus and his wife, the legendary Queen Boudicca. When the Romans invaded, the Iceni entered into a pact with them, which gave the tribe limited independence. Amongst the Iceni, a growing dislike of the Romans developed. The Romans were extremely brutal. They flogged Queen Boudicca and raped her daughters. Enough was enough, and in AD 60, Queen Boudicca led a revolt against Roman rule. It was one of the bloodiest fought on British soil, and it was the biggest challenge to Roman rule. Around the 4th century AD, the Saxons began to land on the eastern shores of Britain. They decided to settle here, and in so doing laid the foundations of the county we know today. The kingdom they established, the land of the East Saxons, gave the county its name and its original boundaries. In 991 AD, the Battle of Maldon took place at Northy Island on the River Blackwater. This was one of the major Saxon defeats of the Viking Wars. Following the Norman invasion, the Essex landscape began to take on the form recognisable today. Mighty churches rose up through the elms, hamlets became villages and villages became towns, with agriculture at the heart of the Essex economy. Fortresses and castles were built, some to defend the land, both from overseas threats and from within Britain itself, some as a sign of power and others as a defiance to the crown. Today, Colchester Castle is the largest remaining Norman fort in Europe. The revolt led to widespread slaughter across Essex and gathered pace from both Essex and Kent, where their leader, Wat Tyler, had freed the leading rebel and excommunicated priest, John Ball. At Smithfield on June the 15th, an altercation led to Wat Tyler receiving a fatal blow from one of the king's attendants. 13th and 14th centuries really saw Essex flourish. Wool and cloth became major industries, with much being exported to the continent. Other markets developed and towns began to grow. Important historical figures emerged from Essex around this time. People like Anne Boleyn, whose father held the manor of New Hall near Malden, today a successful vineyard. And Robert Devereux, Earl of Essex, the last traitor to be executed at the Tower of London, having attempted a failed rebellion against the government. In 1588, Essex was in the front line as the Spanish Armada made its way up the Channel to invade England. Both Harwich and Tilbury sent men and ships to meet the threat, and a 12,000-strong garrison was kept at Tilbury to protect London. It was at Tilbury that Elizabeth I gave her famous speech. I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and a king of England too. Today, Tilbury Fort is the best surviving example of 17th century military engineering in England. Following heavy losses, the Spanish abandoned thoughts of invasion, and they were chased up the North Sea by the English. The Spanish defeat marked the beginning of England's rise as a supreme European power. Specialist trades continued to develop, such as saffron, giving its name to the town of Saffron Walden. Impressive houses were built from the profits generated by these enterprises, such as Audley End House, a magnificent Jacobean house built in the 1600s and remodelled in the 18th century by Robert Adams, with a fine kitchen garden and grounds designed by Capability Brown. Windmills were constructed across the county to process the vast tonnage of wheat being produced. The coastal towns of Brightlingsea, Harwich, Malden and Burnham-on-Crouch developed as vital ports, exporting produce as well as bringing in exciting new merchandise from far-off lands. As the Industrial Revolution took off, Essex benefited hugely, with railways spreading throughout the county, creating work and bringing with it even more trade. 
Malden became a popular seaside destination during the Victorian era, with the opening of Promenade Park in 1895, which attracted visitors by train from London. From a defensive viewpoint, Essex could be seen as London's big brother, looking out for its well-being when trouble reared its head. It was a role that the county would come to serve once more with great success during the First and Second World Wars. An airfield at Boreham near Chelmsford was home to the vast American bombers, whilst Hornchurch in the southwest of the county offered a base to some of the Spitfire squadrons that proved to be decisive in the Battle of Britain. Networks of pillboxes and gun emplacements were erected around the county to defend the approaches to London. Many still stand today. Since the Second World War, the new towns of Harlow and Basildon have been developed to house an originally displaced but now growing population. There's been significant growth in many towns throughout the county, as many Londoners realise the benefits of living in a rural environment, offering a better quality of life. Today, the southern stretches of the county are at the heart of the Thames Gateway Regeneration Project and a major manufacturing and commercial hub. Some of the world's largest companies established important bases here. Stansted International is the fastest growing airport in the UK. Designed by Lord Foster, it was opened in 1985 as London's third airport, with direct access to the city via Liverpool Street Station. It offers a direct link for UK business to the rest of the world. Despite these wonderful developments and the wealth and excitement that they bring, Essex remains a predominantly rural county and one has to travel little to find often vast areas seemingly unchanged from days of old.